Coming up next on Good Taste. You know this is going to be good now, right? It's been an unforgettable season. These are stunning. Bursting with flavor, and most of all, filled with good taste. Oh, man. Yeah. We'll reveal the top tastes we just can't get enough of. Delicious, huh? What delicious dish will make the final cut? Mm. And later, it's showtime. We're back for one more bite of this bodacious burger. Plus, wait till you see what you can do with leftovers. That's not one of your favorite rotisserie chickens, is it? <laughs> it's a taste of season eight. Good taste starts right now. everyone, welcome to Good Taste. I'm Tangie Patton. What a season, so many flavors, so many fantastic combinations. Dish after dish has been nothing short of spectacular. Can you pick a favorite? We can't, but some are so special, they're truly unforgettable. Here are the top eight dishes of season eight. We're starting things off right with the brilliant Beef Wellington from Tardif's in San Antonio. It's a dish full of passion, full of love, full of detail. It's also full of flavor. Lots of butter. French cuisine is butter. I love it. Butter and more butter, right? <laughs> That's why We're it's so good. That. This beauty gets wrapped with mushroom duck salad, thinly sliced prosciutto, and delicate puff pastry. Oh, cheers. Cheers. Bon cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Bon Thank you. It's fantastic. At number seven, we've got a tie. The bacon wrapped meatloaf from Lambo's in Dallas and the katsu sando from B&B Butcher's right next door in Fort Worth. This is our katsu sando. It's a $120 sandwich. It's $120? Yes, it is. This phenomenal treat features the A5 Japanese Wagyu ribeye, the eye of the ribeye, to create a dreamy sandwich like no other. Delicious, huh? Just melts in your mouth like butter or what? Unbelievable. It gets better and better and better. Yeah, as you chew it. Oh, man. Save room for Lambo's mouth-watering bacon-wrapped meatloaf. You have a meatloaf unlike any other I've ever seen. We're smoking it, topping with the bacon, and making like an ancho chili sauce that goes on top of it. So it's mom's meatloaf, but turned up a notch or two. Wow, that's amazing. Coming in at number six is some serious gumbo from the Louisiana Longhorn Cafe in Round Rock. It's wonderful. <laughs> Dig in to all five kinds of this all-star gumbo, each made with a decadent dark root. You won't be disappointed. It tastes like being back in Louisiana. I really was not expecting this, so yeah, really good. I fell in love with number five on our list a little place called Hill and Vine in Fredericksburg. I think it's great. I love it. Everything here is pretty amazing. But these incredible smoked carnitas nachos are not to be missed. Oh my gosh, those are delicious. Tortilla chips topped with slow smoked pork, shredded smoked cheddar, and more. So good, they're addictive. The best nachos I've ever had. If you've got a sweet tooth, you're gonna love number four on our list. It's phenomenal. It's amazing. The incredible baklava from Island Grill in Houston will keep your taste buds dancing long after the last bite. We think the secret lies in where it started. It's grandma's recipe, of course. I mean, seriously, it may be the best baklava I've ever had. Yes. It's phenomenal. Yeah. Rolling out at number three, our favorite chicken fried steak of the season. It takes a lot of chutzpah to say you've got the best chicken fried steak in Texas, but Wild Oats in Houston puts their money where their mouth is. To be able to have the best chicken fried steak, you have to start with the best meat. And boy, do they. It's Wagyu beef from the butcher next door. It's a special steak. It's a special steak. <laughs> the steaks are soaked in buttermilk and ranch, then coated in a top secret mix of spices. That breading is massaged into every nook and cranny to make for an extra crispy steak worth talking about. 
It's deep fried, smothered in mashed potatoes and green beans, then topped with jalapeno bacon gravy, bacon, and chives. This is like a Texas cheers. cheers. It's fantastic. Your quest is fantastic. Sliding into the second spot on our list, the exotic flavors of India. When you take the bite, it just surprises you. You don't expect it, but it's just so good. She's talking about the flavor-packed lamb from Musafir, an Indian restaurant in the Houston Galleria. It just, it's just amazing. The melt-in-your-mouth lamb chops are divine. It's marinated for a very long time, so it gets soft and tender and get, gets these gorgeous flavors. It's so alive. The spices in that sauce. It's gorgeous. Mm, it is. Amazing. Finally, there's one dish that really stands out, full of spices and just an explosion of flavors. Just one more taste, you'll be hooked too. Landing in the coveted top spot, is a spectacular dish from the chef's table in Houston, a restaurant that does just about everything right. It's an amazing restaurant. The food is great. Very delicious. I can't say enough about the chef's table's extraordinary bone-in short rib. This baby is a labor of love. So what I'm doing is I'm using a combination of a sweet barbecue and a hickory rub. And so, yeah, I like to play with people's taste buds, you see. I'm then going to sear this in the oven. And after it cools down, I will then put it in a bath of water that is at 135 degrees, and it's gonna sit in this water for two whole days. It actually takes nearly three days for these ribs to reach your plate. Wow, so when you order these ribs, you know a lot of love went into that, oh, right? Oh, you know, a lot. you know, my heart, my soul, yeah. passion, everything, yeah. it's all in there. Believe me, one bite is worth the wait. This is incredible. I don't think I've ever spent so much time tasting something. This is incredible. Nice, isn't it? But I will tell you, I think this is the most tender, both of these the most tender ribs I've ever had. Thank you. Hands down. And flavor. This is incredible. Thank you. There you have it. The dishes we just can't get enough of. Be sure to visit our site at goodtaste.tv to see them all and get some of the recipes. Cheers to every single unforgettable dish. Hope you're still hungry. We're coming to you from the beautiful Goya Kitchens with the executive chef, Fernando Desa, making a very easy Puerto Rican style beans and rice, right? It's called mamposteado. Mamposteado is a rice and beans in which you use the leftover rice from the day before and also the beans. Then you mix it up and make a stir fry out of it. I love that. Leftovers. Super easy. Gourmet. Perfect. So first we're gonna start with our Goya Savoyan olive oil, so good, we're winning. Basically we're gonna saute some of our Goya chorizo from Spain. This chorizo is amazing, very different from Mexican chorizo. I it's love different. it. A lot of paprika, garlic, yeah, a lot pimenton. Of then if you can help me out, we're gonna add some of the Goya sofrito, which is a cooking base. Has Meta. a lot of the ingredients already in it, right? Yes. Then after that, we're gonna add the Goya pink beans. Nice and creamy inside, they're so good. We get the rice we made yesterday, that we save it, heat it up. We're gonna add the Goya sweet plantains or maduros. They come frozen, you don't have to peel them, you don't have to fry them, just heat them up. So now you get the sweetness, the smokiness, the creaminess. Now we're gonna serve it. Voila. So good, right? Whoa. See the smokiness, the sweetness, it's so good, the creaminess of the beans, it's amazing. It is amazing, and what an affordable way to feed your family. This really could be a meal. It is by yourself. I love it, and we have the recipe online. Delish. I'm going back. Rachel. Still to come. She's the queen of Texas barbecue. For the first time ever, this living barbecue legend reveals her secret recipe. But first, it's time for a cheers to the best of the best in my wine finds. Also, we're learning how to turn leftovers into something special. It's not <laughs> leftover from Mahoney's, I promise you. <laughs> You'll never look at leftovers the same way again. Next. Cisco, at the heart of food and service.
time for my wine finds, and I've chosen a few favorites from the season that are worth a revisit. Keep in mind, every wine you see every week on this segment is one of my favorites, so it's always a hard choice to narrow it down. At first, a beautiful Chardonnay from a beautiful spot, the Russian River Valley in California. This is the Rayburn Chardonnay. You're going to taste fresh pears, crisp apples, with just a hint of vanilla. Pair this with a great cheese tray, pastas, chicken, super fantastic all by itself. The Rayburn Chardonnay from Russian River Valley is only $17 a bottle. Up next, a perfect tailgating wine, barbecue wine, even spicy food wine. The Calillon del Cremon Malbec. Its enticing, smoky, luscious bouquet lures you in. You'll taste ripe plums, currants, and finish with a hint of dark chocolate. This is a fantastic Malbec, a wonderful wine at only $19.98 a bottle. Another very versatile food wine that I enjoy is the Ochagavia Don Sylvester Gran Reserva Carmenere. Break out of your Cabernet habit for just one sip. You'll love its flavors of dark plums and blueberries and the hints of exotic spices. This wine pairs perfectly with roast meats, spaghetti and meatballs, even barbecue. The Ochagavia Don Sylvester Gran Reserva Carmenere is only $11 a bottle. Next, an all-time champion in my book for this season, the Ride Cabernet. The winemaker is a woman and a Texan, a winning combination. The grapes for this luscious Cabernet come from the famed Howell Mountain in Napa. The Ride Cabernet truly is one heck of a ride for about $40 a bottle, worth every penny. As always, I found all my wines right here at HEB. Okay, leftovers, right? Some of you cringe when you hear the word, something, it's okay. We are doing something really fun with leftovers and we were with the guy that knows everything about all things food. We're at the global executive chef of Cisco, Neil Daughtery, at Cisco's headquarters in Houston, which if you didn't know, yes, Cisco's headquartered right in Texas, a Texas company originally. And we're making a pot pie, right? Yes, uh, a lot of times we have leftovers in the refrigerator and uh, everybody wonders what to do. Well, well, in, a lot of times leftover meats aren't that great the next day. Yes, because we reheat them in uh, you know, our favorite heating appliance mm -hmm. and uh, it destroys the meat. So uh, the one thing about reheating at all, anything at all is adding a moisture content to it. It's not that hard to take items and reuse them. I know it takes time, and time is the enemy some of the times, but it's amazing how much we throw away. So we Absolutely, and you can save a lot of money repurposing last night's chicken. Yeah, and just dressing it up a little bit, yeah. right? So I've got some onions and mushrooms left over here, so I'm just gonna throw some of those in, and that's gonna give me a nice moisture content. We've got the leftover chicken, which looks pretty dry. Yes, it does. That's not one of your favorite rotisserie chickens, is it? <laughs> it looks like it could be. <laughs> so we're going to add that in there. So next time, we're just going to move that over to you. All right, what have we got in here? A little so bit we of got asparagus? Asparagus, we've got, no, that could be green beans. That could be anything that you had in the refrigerator, leftover spinach. A pot yeah. pie is not discriminative. It'll say, it'll take whatever you throw in there. So we got some leftover mushrooms here. So we've got a leftover turkey gravy here, just because it's leftover. Because it's not, you had it. It's not <laughs> leftover from the holidays, I promise you. <laughs> anyway, so we're gonna put that in there as our sauce. So now we've got a really nice mix. Now, not everybody has pastry at home, but in Texas, I know we have biscuits at home, right? We certainly do. So we have the store-bought biscuits uh, right out of the freezer aisle. We're gonna take this, and we're gonna fill it up with our filling. Well, already that chicken looks amazing. Well, yeah, because we just added the moisture to it because it, yeah. did, it, looked, it looked like it needed help when we got here earlier. So it, on this particular one, it would be three biscuits and that will be our pot pie. Give it a little egg wash. This looks amazing. Hard to believe it was leftovers, right? Oh, well, yeah, it's, just, it's amazing what happens when you dress something up, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you know what you're doing. Mm. It is really good. Oh, I love it. It's like comfort food. It is. This is delicious. Chef, thank you. You're welcome. Coming up, we're going back for one more bite of a burger we can't resist. Nothing beats an awesome burger. And at long last, a barbecue legend is sharing her secret recipe. We'll hear from the queen of Texas barbecue next. 
Get social with us. Follow us on Instagram at Good Taste TV. Good Taste with Tangi is brought to you in part by HEB. You're in for a treat. Not only are you going to get the recipe for Norma Jean's famous beans at Black's Barbecue in Lockhart, we're going to talk to Norma Jean herself. This is a real treat. We've got, what, three generations of the Black family here, right? That's right. Celebrating 90 years, Kent. Yeah, we opened in 1932, and so we've been fortunate to be in the barbecue business for 90 years. Now, Norma Jean, it, it's such an honor to have you join us. What is it like to walk into this business now and think, oh my goodness, 90 years later, it's still yes. going strong. Stronger than ever. Yes, I just can't believe it because we just started out at a very small dining room and a, about five employees and we just grew and grew and it we did it so gradually, but yet again, it wasn't gradually. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. Now we have four. Four restaurants. It's an incredible family success story, truly. And we're going to be doing your famous beans. This is the first side Black's ever sold, right? Correct. So Bear, people know she's coming before she gets here, right? That's right. The air is different. You know, you feel <laughs> there's a feeling it's different. And uh, we, we're always excited when she comes because uh, it makes us better, uh, but also a little bit nervous. You know, we want to impress her because she's been such a great leader uh, for everybody and taking care of us and the employees so well. So you can make these at home, and of course we'll have the recipe, but there's basic ingredients that go into it. Yeah, we got uh, salt and pepper. This is some uh, paprika. Oh, paprika. Yeah, chili powder right here. And then we got some cumin. I've traveled a lot of places in the country and the world, and I've never tasted this exact style of pinto beans. Yeah. So, no, Mom, you did, you did a good job. Well, thank you. <laughs> it took many tries. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, this is Texas. Uh, we're a barbecue place. we got to put a little salt pork in of here. Of course. And then, of course, we got some onions. Very important thing. Yeah. And these are some pinto beans that we've soaked, maybe overnight, maybe just warmed them up and soaked them for two or three hours, helps get them a little softer. There is a secret method. It's called what? Bumping, Bumping the, the beans. Bumping the beans. Yes, letting the beans bump together and then the little skin on the bean will split open and the thickening inside of the bean will come out and make the juice thicker. This is such a treat, truly. And thank you for sharing your recipe. First time ever the recipe's been yes, shared, yes. right? A, a little bean toast right A bean here. toast, bean yes. Right I've never here. done a bean toast. Here we go. go. Cheers. Here's Congrats. The 90 more years. Absolutely. <laughs> You know how there's always that one restaurant you just can't wait to get back to. Well, here's a classic spot we always look forward to visiting again. There's always a good time happening at Fry High Country Store. We're dog friendly, kid friendly, everything friendly. I love it. Look at how airy it is. Their formula for success is pretty simple. Like the sign out front says, burgers, fries, and live music. It's a place to check your diet at the door, cut loose, and feast on all your favorites. How would you describe Fry Heights to someone who hasn't been here before? It's an old, I don't know, almost like an old soul that we try to continue in that direction. I love that, it's like an old soul. This historic wood hut puts Southern comfort food front and center. That is way cool. The signature burger, right? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Put all the mushrooms on it. All the good stuff, right? Jalapenos, mushrooms, onions, and of course, bacon. Whoa. It's That's massive. Country. Just as beautiful as I remembered it. Yes, ma'am. Nothing beats an awesome burger. The colossal patio and playground filled with fun and games make this family-friendly spot shine. It's huge out here. Is there anybody out there want to have a cold beer? Keep it to the morning light. 
love it where you just kick back. Well, I ain't got no hair, but let my hair down, you know? <laughs> Here, you can take in a ton of tunes from real Nashville stars to Lone Star up-and-comers. It's just an awesome place to come to. It's just like a little piece of Texas heaven. So, congrats Thank on you. your success and many, 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 another hundred years. Thank you very much. We love to share good taste. Head to our website at goodtaste.tv where you'll find delicious recipes from top chefs, my latest wine finds, and restaurant recommendations. Plus, you can see all our episodes right here. Don't forget, sign up for our newsletter while you're there. When visiting Houston, the Good Taste team loves to stay at the beautiful Royal Sinesta. What a season, right? We love sharing all the fun and good eats across this mighty state. Most of all, we love sharing it all with you. Don't forget, you can always get more on our website at goodtaste.tv and always follow us on Instagram. We have a lot of fun there at Good Taste TV. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers to good taste. Bumping, bumping, not bumping beans. Bumping, yeah. Bumping, we serve bumping beans. Yeah, it's not bumping. Bumping the beans, it's bumping. Bumping the beans. Bumping. Yeah. Bumping. We are in Texas. Yeah, right. Yeah. right. Everybody good? Yeah. Clap, clap. That's your new clap when I'm eating a rib. Yeah. <laughs>